so why are we talking about women in tech? We're talking about women in tech for several reasons. There has been a lot of research done around gender diversity. And one of the things that they noticed was that gender diversity positively benefits companies. Businesses with a woman, with a woman on the executive team are more likely to have higher valuation at both first and last funding. That's huge. Research by the University of Castilla-La Mancha in Spain has shown that gender diverse R&D teams lead to greater creativity and better decision making. And overall, this is something that I've heard from the morning, looking at skills, what skills do we need to be able to cross over this digital divide? By having a vibrant and skilled pipeline of women studying and working in technology, this ensures talent for the future. And who doesn't want talent for the future? Family plays a huge role. And the people you have in your lives play a huge role in where you want to go and guiding you. You do a lot of mentorship. What is something that you've seen with young women that you've been working with and mentoring that has worked, that has propelled them from where they are to be able to stand on a stage or to lead organizations? Family support, parental support. Uh, in the last program we did, the parents came. And, and the one thing that we learned with, with Rose and Jumane is they are not aware at all. And you could have seen the shock in their face and how amazed they are. And then we realized, maybe we shouldn't just sit down and blame the parents. They, they do not know themselves. So not only should we mentor uh, young girls, we need to find a way to work with parents to make them understand how important it is. So it's a barrier of a mindset change and a cultural sensitivity. Have you ever been in a situation where you've walked into a room and you've thought, I need to behave like a man if I'm going to navigate through this. Has there ever, that ever happened to you? <laughs> that question? I'm, I'm asking because, I'll tell you why I'm asking. I've had a lot of young women that have come to me and said to me, um, you know, you sound like a man sometimes. Oh, yes. You, you're, yeah. so, you're so aggressive and you're forceful and you will take the mic or you will make sure that you're heard or you will make sure that a communi your community is represented or your country is represented. And I say, well, why is that a male trait? Why can't that just be me being passionate about innovation and entrepreneurship in my country? Yeah, and wanting it. Tanzania to have that platform. Why do yeah. I have to then be labeled as male? So yes. I'm just asking, does so, that happen? The thing, you've said it for me because I, I was trying to be diplomatically correct, you know. But I think it's a whole idea of being confident with who you are, believing in what you're saying, knowing what your vision, being assertive, asking for what you think should be done in a manner that you have evidence and fact that supports you and actually being able to push to see results. That is being seen as it's a manly thinking, but it's not. So, Jumane, His Excellency the President Magufuli comes to you and says, J4, I'm granting you one wish. One wish for women in innovation and entrepreneurship and tech in Tanzania. Just one, huh? I know you have a list, but you get just one. What is it? Put coding schools in all public girls' schools in Tanzania. So I think my one wish for women in tech is actually not only for women. It's for anyone with a startup. I would really, really love to see that startups don't have to pay tax for three years. So we can start and fail and start and fail and start and fail until we actually figure out that we have a product that we can take to market. And I, don't, I, know, I just feel like if that's for women only, great. But if we can be inclusive, that would help young women with starting businesses also. And I think it would help both men and women. So that's my one wish. What's your? So I would wish uh, for Mark Puri to, to, to fire or start every teacher or lecturer who is setting like girls behind. They're telling them they can't do anything. I wish you could just throw them away from the system. And also like the entire public to not to consider girls like they are this uh, special like gender, like they can't do anything without being empowered. So they should treat them like all human beings because we all have, like we are all smart in our own ways, whether boy or girl. So I just wish that. Um... I think one thing I also, it, as you were talking, it came to my mind that um, mo most of the time, I'm not a, a tech person, I'm married to one, 
but um, most I've seen that people who are in tech, especially women, they really behave as men, most of them. From the way they dress, I, I rarely see a woman with high heel and lipstick and a mini skirt coding or doing something like that. So, <laughs> so the there are very few, there are very few. But what I'm, I'm thinking, <laughs> if we see more of, you know, fashionable women, very, you know, they can express their sexuality and yet be the geek uh, in, in ICT would help to make more women get into ICT. <laughs> so, I'm going to disagree with you. And I'm going to say that I think that's where our problem is is when we label a woman who's in techie, she's got to be in heels and a short skirt. I think that's where the problem is. Because everyone's different. Um, a, Nancy behind you will tell you, and others will tell you, if you see me at Bonnie, I'm in jeans and a t-shirt. And that's who I am at Bonnie. And that's who I am when I go to the supermarket. Am I that person at the club? Maybe not. I don't know. If you see the women around who are conductors, and look at their dressing and let's say uh, her, her dressing after work is different so most of the times just because she's a conductor she will dress like a male conductor and most of the times most girls who do coding is true they do dress like tomboys so just because she's doing a work done by a man don't have to blend into being a man that's the problem we have this psychology that for us to actually blend into that profession we have to somehow dress like I guess at some point we also sometimes do not mind ourselves, but as long as you're confident in what you're doing, you can dress anyhow and still do what you're good at. Okay. I believe a woman is a woman regardless of what she looks like. You know, because for, 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 for a period of time, let's talk about it, different industries have shown off some women because of either how they look, how they wear, sometimes even how you talk, you know? I've been in media industry for a while and for a long period I wanted to go in TV but because I'm not petite enough, I wasn't allowed until this year, you know? And so I don't think if a woman wants to wear jeans and converse to go coding, I've got no problem with that. You know, if a woman wants to go in heels and a dress, go coding with lipstick, I've got no problem with that too. I think a woman value and a woman worth is so much more than how she looks like. Because yes. guys will show up at work with shorts, and they will suit, and some of them will be in plain shirts. We don't look at them and value them and as how yes. they look. But I would yes. like to be able to work in a country where my contribution of what I do and what I stand for count for more further than, than how I look yes. and how and what I wear. More than your high heels yeah. and more than your dress. That's what I'm saying. <laughs>